Uh, this is why it's called Crazy G in the G spot for those of you who don't know because it's always wacky around here and right now I'm hoping he's still there. We have Mr. Chris Weiss on the phone. You there, Chris? Yes, sir, I am. How you doing? Not too bad, man. You know what? I'm glad we finally got you on the phone. We had a little bit of a, a problem there connecting with Chris. We finally got him. He is the basis for the cult. He has his own band called Owl and... And from my latest information, he's worked with Ace Freely on Ace Freely's new CD, Space Invader. Is that correct, Chris? Yeah, yeah. I had a really great time in the studio with Ace. And uh, we met a few years back. I did his uh, Behind the Player DVD, and that's how we met, actually. And we just hit it off on that session. I was the only bass player, then, but he had guitar players and drummers coming out, like a lot of guys in band uh, that were influenced by Kiss and Ace. And uh, I was the bass player for the whole day, which was really cool because, uh, you know, I got to know him and get get to vibe with him. And uh, back then, I could tell we were going to work together again. I just didn't know when because I'm in the cult and, uh, you know, the scheduling and OWL and all the other projects. So um, the cult right now is in writing mode, and that kind of means Billy and Ian start out with all their demos. So this is a wonderful opportunity and break for me from the cult to do Ace Fraley, and uh, the new owl is already in the bag, and uh sounds great. It's really exciting to have a third owl release. I can't even believe we had one, let alone now our third, and all these people kind of anticipating it. It's really exciting. The new record from Owl is called The Right Thing, and I'm on tour right now with Ace Fraley. I'm standing in a field to get this signal. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I didn't get a chance to say hello, welcome, and thanks for taking the time to hit the G-spot once again. And, yes, Chris is, for those of you out there who are listening, Chris is standing in the middle of a field in upstate New York to get a good signal. <laughs> So, yeah. the things that the artists go through for the fans and for the radio industry. So, oh, man, it's, it's, just, it's just part of the territory. I mean, people don't understand. They're like, well, I left you a message. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, I'm going through a big mountain. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I mean, It's not as convenient as being home, that's for sure. But it's pretty fun, and I know how to deal with it. And key to the road is being fluid and being uh, going with the flow, because everything's always changing. There's always little problems. You go to sound check your favorite amp suddenly blew you gotta go with the flow it's a, it's a lesson you learn from being on the road and that's the thing with me too I do what I can and just go with it and if it works great if it doesn't then uh, you know do something to fix it <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But I really enjoy being on the road. There's sort of a routine I have where I try and uh, do the things I do at home to, to a certain degree. Like I like to do yoga and I like to go for a jog and stuff like that if I can. So there's things like that that I do throughout the day that keep me sane. And I also keep up my bass practice. I, I have a little Steinberger travel bass because it's really light and easy just to have with me at all times. So I'm always like shredding. And what's really exciting is uh, Ace gave me a bass solo in this set. So every night I got a bass solo. And uh, I'm doing lots of singing with these guys, we got Scotty Coogan in the band, Richie Scarlet, the Emperor, and Ace Fraley. So it's just a real, it's a nuclear lineup. It's awesome. And as you said, you know, uh, a lot has been going on for you since the last time we talked. It was about your band Owl. What I want to know is, what was it like working with Ace on this CD, and was it a smooth process? Yeah, well, like I said, Ace and I had a very, very uh, obvious chemistry, and, and we gelled very quickly. So, um, you know, Ace knows what he wants, and he's very he's an outstanding musician, and he's actually a great bass player. He played bass on the rest of the record. I, I uh, guessed it in on Starship, which was the instrumental. And on that one, for example, uh, Ace had a, the, the basic ideas, and I formulated kind of the uh, high bass line stuff, the melodic bass stuff, the walking down thing, and... And I think Ace had maybe even the main idea to do ding, ding, da, ding. He had the basic idea going already. So um, it, a lot, it just seems like a lot of the times we're on the same page and it just naturally gels. So uh, I also did another one called What Every Girl Wants. And that's just like a really good rock song that's just so catchy and great and needed just real solid, uh, really strong bass on that one. And the Starship was probably a little more melodic and a little more movement on the bass. And uh, gosh, it just kind of popped out. I just played the line and Ace was like, that's really cool. Do that. 
that. And I find out of many of the, you know, out of all the musicians I've played, bass might be one of the most natural. Very natural for him. And, and what I mean is, it's like he kind of has an intuition about his music, and it, it shows. He, he doesn't second guess himself. He knows what he wants, and um, I respect that. And that helps me really give him what he wants. You know what I mean? So uh, I like working with Ace a lot. I mean, I hope there's more recording. It's all up to him, of course. Um, I'd love to do more. And uh, this tour, we just did our first show last night. And there's a couple of hiccups. I think, uh, I don't know, we don't know which tech or whatever. But one of the guitars, we had a song where it was tuned down. And we all got handed out to tune guitars. And everyone, you know, just there and said, screw it. Let's go do another song. So what's really cool about Ace is, like I said, he's a real natural. Like, uh, their mentality for the show. But we just, like, went on and kicked ass the rest of the show. And there was a little hiccup. But, you know, it wasn't our fault. It was just out of tune instruments or whatever. There was a confusion about the tuning on one song. But there's a major chemistry with these four guys. And uh, Ace is in great form. I think he's playing great. And uh, I got to say, it's a lot of fun for me to have a laugh with him every day. You know. I couldn't even begin to imagine the lap shaft with him on a daily basis. There's lots of funny stuff. Definitely got a, he's got a good sense of humor and enjoys having fun, but the, the man knows what he wants and he works hard too. I was actually really surprised that he covered the Steve Miller track, The Joker. What was your take on that and what did you think when you first heard this track was going to be covered? I thought it was kind of cool because of the, the play on words and stuff for Ace. Uh, I didn't do that track, but uh, I heard it after and you know, he's got that tradition or, or history of doing a cover song, and it's neat to hear an artist do one. Um, you know, whether it becomes a hit or not, that's always up in the air, I suppose. But uh, I, I think it's great, because Ace has a history of doing covers here and there, and they, a lot of them came out great. So, uh, you know, I think it's a cool thing to experiment with that. You never know where it's going to go. Do you have a favorite off Space Invaders? Uh, well, Space Invaders, the song itself, I think, is really rocking and modern. I mean, that's a great first statement. Uh, that might be one of my I really do like Starship, though. I think, you know, Ace's history of having instrumentals and stuff, I'm really glad I made it on there. Um, in fact, I was playing something the other day in Soundcheck, uh, kind of like an owly two-hand tapping bit, which I do a lot in Owl and kind of expand the bass stuff. And he was like, that's great. Maybe we should do that on the next record for uh, my instrumental. What's so neat about Ace is, is he's, um, he's kind of in the moment and, you know, he's He's, uh, like I said, it's natural. You know, he doesn't, nothing's contrived. He knows what he's turned on. You know, I, I would imagine there, there'd be a lot more to come. You know, I'm trying to see how all this works out with the cult, too. So, uh, but the universe has been working in my favor. Everything's been lining up. Well, and it has, because I'll tell you, since our last interview, and I believe that was August 2013, you've actually exploded even more onto the scene. And, um, as you stated, your other projects, the cult, and of course, I. Owl, the new EP, as you stated, Things You Can't See, is coming out sometime in 2015. What can you tell us specifically about this EP, if anything? Well, uh, we did it all in upstate New York at Dan's uh, media company and recording studio that was once a Roman Catholic church that he had all converted. Our drummer, Dan Dinsmore, um, owns over at Media and over at the small label we're on. So we did all this in a gigantic Roman Catholic church, which was very vibey, very, very vibey. And I was getting into some stuff like things beyond us and like um, things maybe planned that we don't know about, that we don't have any control about or fate, destiny, uh, mysticism, karma... It's kind of, there's a lot of things being addressed in this new music, but I would say the new Owl stuff is in line with the old stuff, except we've expanded. Like, there's timpani and piano and uh, bowed, maybe more bowed bass and some orchestration on this one. And there's some real, real insane journeys where it's very beautiful and all of a sudden you're into the, the depths of hell with some banshee screaming and some really insane riffs. Um, I think we got more daring. I think as a lead singer, I, I just got more comfortable. You know, it's my third album with the band and uh, I think as a lead singer, I'm singing just very honestly, and I develop a little more into my own the things that I'm very comfortable doing and strong at. So all these things come together with the third album. I think the fans are going to be really excited because there's heavy duty instrumental like bass work and drum work and guitar work, but yet every song you can sing back as soon as you hear it. You're like, wow, is this this is different, and then you're like, but I can sing it right back. It's really funny how you mentioned that. What were the circumstances surrounding this EP when it first came to mind? 
Well, you know, I've been working like a crazy person. I was just coming off the road with the cult, and we're, we were talking to the guys in Owl, like, well, what are we going to do? And Dan Dinsmore's like, well, you're off for the holidays. You're probably coming home for Christmas, and uh, we may as well do another record, you know? I got the studio here. Let's get going. And uh, Dan was kind of the uh, catalyst. I had a few song ideas and some songs that haven't been recorded, but kind of started from scratch, and I just wrote in the studio. I started going in every day and just would throw up, like, click tracks and drum machines and bass lines and rough guitars and threw it all together and then we worked backwards and replaced the drums and the guitar and the last thing I did on this record which was really cool and different was the bass all the bass was rough and then I redid the bass to the final drum track and it sounds a little discombobulated in the process but it wasn't because I got to play with Dan's final drum track and um, usually we've done we've done a lot of it live and then we do overdub but uh, it came out extremely band tight and worthy because like Dan was in the room sitting even though he wasn't performing the drum tracks and I was very in tune with his live performance and so it's uh it was a little different but I think what we got out of it was it was a little bit of an experiment to do it that way but we got some of the best stuff we did by trusting ourselves because we didn't know what the songs were going to sound like you know what I mean like I'd be I'd be hacking away at a chorus and there'd be no guarantee it was going to be good yet the whole song was done so that was kind of challenge you know that sounds totally cool and did you go in with the attitude that this was going to be different than the right thing in 2000 yeah, a little bit, because on the right thing, um, there is sort of some different styles and things we were messing with for the first time. Like, we had the song Rover with the bagpipe. Uh, the actual title track, The Right Thing, might be in line with some of our heavier uh, style stuff. And, you know, we had some extremely melodic things on there, too. Like, very much like what Owl does, that they show a journey. But I think what we have on this record is is the Owl stamp down after some experimentation on The Right Thing, which is definitely who we are. But um, you couldn't really say, like, the Irish song Rover would sum us up if you heard it for the first time, you know what I mean? I think what we accomplished on the new owl is in one three-minute or four-minute song, you get the full experience, which I'm really proud of. You get the banshee man. You get the really musical soft side and the emotional kind of content. We don't have to listen to a whole record now to understand who we are. I think we came into our own and kind of own our sound, and you hear it within one song. That takes time to develop. You know, we really tended to our garden and it grew into something that we didn't even expect, which is what, what's really special about this. And uh, Dan's drumming, probably the most phenomenal drumming I've heard in a long time, and Jason's guitar playing is just really tasty and complimentary and melodic, and uh, it's nasty when it needs to be. So I'm really proud of my guy, you know, that we've hung in there together. And last year's The Right Thing did pretty well for an indie band, getting all over in Rolling Stone and Revolver and all that. So I think people are kind of aware of us now and looking forward to this. I've got a lot of positive feedback about last year stuff and you know already uh i'm hearing uh, some of the ace fans come up to me like last night and like when's the new owl coming i'm like oh that's great people want to hear music again you know like real music it's <laughs> exciting it is and you should be excited your experience in music is widespread and i'm curious to know how easy or how hard is it for you to say switch gears playing with other artists in other words, does it come natural to you to adjust to other artists' styles or work ethic, and how do you approach it if you've never worked with them before? Um, I, I've been very uh, blessed with the fact that I've been a chameleon, yes. I, I, I've been kind of able to jump in and out and uh, understand the bands. I think the main reason is is because if, if I didn't know something or I was a little uh, uneducated about a band or an artist, I, I do my research. And I treat it like probably like an actor would preparing for a part. It's probably not much different. I mean, you know, you bring what you are to it and you also honor the gig. And so I think the the main thing I've done and kept up with was just kind of like understanding who you're dealing with and not being too, you know, you're, you're there to serve. But then it all comes around anyway. You know, people start seeing you're bringing your own thing to it, too. So I think the main thing is to first come in and, like, try and get a handle on what kind of bass playing, for example, since on a basis they've been into and what some of their influences are and what made them get their spark and stuff like that. I think it's good to understand that. Like with Ian and Billy, for example, I know uh, Ian loves Joy Division, you know. Uh, he's, he's been in the doors. He's had that experience. It's just good to know, like, maybe what turned these guys on at first, you know. So that's part part of it and I think with it was Ace I mean and, and the cult and like things like I've done like Mick Jagger and Ozzy's record and stuff like that fortunately for me I've had a whole lifetime of watching and paying attention so um, on those gigs I already had the education 
I already had the background. I already knew all about Ozzy, and I've known a lot about Ace over the years. You know, there's always more to learn and surprises, but um, I'm quite in tune to, you know, Gene's bass playing and Ace's solo records. So I would say it came quite easy and naturally for me, although it's work, you know what I mean? There's, there's got to pay attention and really get your details and the music together. But once you're done with that, it's just good time. It's just fun. And that's what it's all about, man, making that music and enjoying what you're doing and have fun doing it. Yeah, and that, you know, it's just been amazing for me to be you know, a young kid looking up to all these artists and then uh, actually playing with them. And I'm, I'm, like I said, Ace, this is a special one for me. I don't think I would have been in music unless it was for Kiss and Ace. And um, that led on to Iron Maiden for me, and that's why I played bass or whatever. But it, that element of fantasy and all that, I really like that in the music. I mean, it's entertainment after all, and that's, you can have fun with that. I'm right there with you. You know, Kiss, Maiden, Priest, all of them. Queen. Listen, I know you're in the field. I know you're probably cold. That This weather that came in is excruciating all i have to ask is other than the new cd coming out in 2015 is there anything else we expect from you whether it be this year or 2015 well um there's definitely the uh the new cult material looming although that's, that's a process and starting with ian and billy so that's what it's allowed me to be here with ace in a, in a certain sense um so that's coming up next year new cult material the new owl is going to come out in the first quarter and uh um, um, we're going to have videos and little, some little extras in the EP package on iTunes or whatever, and uh, some behind-the-scenes footage and stuff like that, too. we got quite a bit of stuff for this release. So if you're interested in what Al is doing, we're for sure going to unveil some more. And uh, the music I'm really excited about, I feel like I broke some new ground, and it's really hard to do in this day and age, but uh, we're pretty proud of it. And you can always check out what's going on with us on OwlTheBand.net or on Facebook. And, um, yeah, next year new owl videos we're going to be doing shows and uh brewing up a few things that i can't really mention yet until i got it in the book for sure but some really big shows and stuff too which is going to surprise a lot of people <laughs> it's going to be cool <laughs> it sounds pretty outstanding to me and i'm actually looking forward to it i i loved your last cd we talked about that the right thing last year and if you say this is going to be a lot better i'm looking my chops already man yeah i'm really excited i would say you know those elements that you've heard now are there uh, but we've just come into our own. I, I don't know how I'll say it, but we kind of own it now. Like there's there's no uh, there's no mistaking. It's an owl sound, and uh, there's a stomp on it with the confidence that I think uh, we developed into. It was there on the first and second records. You know, uh, the first record, the the debut record, was just called Owl. That did pretty good, and our second record got a lot of publicity as well. But um, like I said, the band's matured. You shared enough of your time with me today. I appreciate it. You brave in the elements up in upstate new york Where it takes, buddy. you know i wish you the best with this tour with ace i wish you the best with the cult stuff coming up and of course you know owl as well the new material coming out next year and hopefully we can talk again same time next year and uh see where you've gone even farther in the universe <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, I'm flying around with the space, man. You never know. You know, definitely Al is coming. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more to come with Ace. I mean, we've been chatting about next year and uh, trying to work it all out. So I, I, I'm I'm loving playing with Ace and Scotty Coogan and Richie Scarlett. I mean, what a great band. And, uh, you know, yeah, there's going to be a lot more coming from all of it. So looking forward to sharing more. Well, I can't wait, as I said. Again, thank you. Uh, I wish you the best. I hope everything works out. And uh, keep on rocking rocking man because you're doing it right you're getting that great stuff out there and uh i'm enjoying it oh uh, yeah thank you so much it's always a pleasure talking to you and uh oh yeah i i, I guessed uh, i guessed it on the new kill code record that uh joey z produced and I, I did a bow track on top of one of their tracks uh did a, a upright bass bow thing and, and actually they they wanted me to do an intro with just like a bow solo so keep an eye out for my uh, boys in kill code too you know them right oh, oh definitely yeah. i haven't been lazy around around in between anything let's just say that i guess you have not man <laughs> yeah really looking forward to sharing with you and i hope we talk again buddy all right same here man go get warm have a good one and uh stay safe and rock and roll man all right thanks man take care everybody have a good one ladies and gentlemen chris weiss bass player for the cult his own project owl the band and 
Ace Freely. First of all, I want to thank him. I want to thank Ace Freely. I want to thank Owl, the cult, and I want to thank New England Concert Reviews, our sponsor, as always. Right now, speaking of which, we're going to play a new track off of Ace Freely's Space Invader. This is a remake of the Steve Miller classic, The Joker. This is Ace Freely, The Joker, right here on WSUR. 